I think it's safe to say that people hate spoilers. Every video about anything nowadays is riddled with spoiler warnings, even older things that most people would already know about if they clicked on the video. Spoilers have now changed the way we view media. One of the biggest examples of this is probably the most hyped movie of the past two years, Avengers Infinity War. The directors and producers of that movie have done everything in their power to keep any leaks from coming out. They gave their actors incomplete and sometimes completely fake scripts so they didn't even know what they were filming. At the time of this writing, I have not seen Infinity War, so all I can do is make speculations and predict what will happen. But I want to give a hypothetical. Say I had seen Infinity War and I told you that by the end of the movie, Thanos wipes out half of humanity like he said he would in the trailer. You might think that's a pretty big deal, right? Say I also told you that Thanos blows Groot's legs off. Probably not that important. Now these are just wild predictions on my part. I doubt Thanos will wipe out half of humanity, and I doubt he'll even have any interactions with Groot. But for the sake of my point, just go with it. Both of these examples would be considered spoilers, but only one of them really matters. Thanos wiping out half of humanity. Why is that? Context. Spoilers have become such a problem that a lot of people haven't stopped to consider when spoilers really matter. Given the context, important events happening or a character dying could mean absolutely nothing to the narrative. Thanos killing off half the Earth would cause detrimental effects to the MCU. Think of how many heroes would die then. But Groot losing his legs? Well, that's a pretty easy fix. He's a fucking walking tree guy, he'll just grow them back. If you're the type of person that doesn't want to hear or see anything from a show or movie, then that's perfectly fine. But I want to present an idea that might change the perspective on spoilers. Stop worrying about what happens. Worry about what it means. What I mean by this is when you happen to hear a spoiler, think about the context of why it happens and if it's spoiler worthy. Just because you hear something in a show you've never seen doesn't always mean it's important. In episode 8 of Gurren Lagann, Kamina dies. If you've never seen this show and you think that's a spoiler, well, you're right. It is a spoiler. Up until his death, the viewer is under the impression that Kamina is the main character. He's the leader of the group. He's inspired everyone to take down the Beastmen. He's the one who gets the girl. So his death comes out of nowhere. This is where I want people to start thinking. What does his death mean for everyone else? Simon just lost his brother, Yoko lost her boyfriend, Team Dai Gurren lost their leader. How will they cope with this? Who will take over as the leader? Who will pilot Gurren? Is anyone else strong enough to inspire an entire army? So many questions and conflicts arise once you start thinking about things, but they're all about the characters' relationships with Kamina. Now, take the end of Ruby Season 3, where a character named Penny dies. If you think that this is a spoiler, then this is where I'd want you to stop and think about the context of her death. What is her purpose in the story? What is affected by her missing? What are her relationships with other characters? Taking all of that into account, Penny's death is basically meaningless. She serves no purpose in the story besides showing us how advanced technology in Remnant is, which isn't that important. There are many other examples of things that show off their advancements in technology. Nobody is affected by her missing besides Ruby, who was her only friend. And in season 4, Ruby doesn't seem to be affected by her death all too much. Speaking of death, Penny is a robot. She was built once and she can be built again. So that means her death is even less impactful. Only her body is destroyed too. It's not like her brain was put in a blender or something. It's like in Dragon Ball, where characters are just waiting to be brought back. So why is it a big deal to know that she dies? Why would that be a spoiler? Just because it happens? Shock value might be the biggest component to spoilers. Hearing that a main character dies fairly early in the show can throw people for a loop, sometimes to the point where they might not want to finish it. But other times, death can be considered shocking just because people die in gruesome ways. Attack on Titan has multiple scenes of completely random people or characters we barely know dying, and their deaths mean absolutely nothing. They don't impact the story in any way. You could argue that it's to convey the notion that anyone could die at any time, but we already had that established in the very beginning of the show when Eren's mom is killed. When she dies, Eren is immediately given a purpose, to avenge his mother and kill the Titans. 
it gives context to our main character's goal and shows us that people will die in this show. So we don't need all these scenes of fucking randos dying. Every once in a while, sure, fine, go ahead, do it for the lulls. But shock value only stays shocking for so long. Madoko Magica has one of the most shocking death scenes in the past decade of anime. The character Mami dies in episode 3, and while it's shocking at first, once you know it's coming, it kind of loses its luster. Mami is a completely uninteresting character in the short time that we see her. All she does is sit around, giving exposition, and then maybe goes and blows shit up with her guns, or whatever. Why should I care if she lives or dies? She has little to no impact on the characters later on, and she served her purpose in the story, so I'm not affected by her death at all. See, I was spoiled about Mommy's death way before I watched Madoka, so it gave me a different perspective on her character that I wouldn't have had if I didn't know she died. Sometimes knowing when a character dies can completely change the context of their purpose in the narrative. Death is considered the biggest spoiler you can tell someone. But what happens if a show outright tells you that a character is going to die? A show like Plastic Memories asks that question arguably in the first episode. Plastic Memories centers around a company called the Psy Corporation that make androids with synthetic souls named Giftias. Giftias are programmed to do basically anything the owner asks them to. Like, seriously, anything. Want them to be the daughter you never had? Sure. Want them to be a mob boss's assistant? You got it. Want them to give you some sweet, sweet blowy? Bro, they'll hook it up. I mean, it didn't happen in the show, but I'm sure they do it. Anyway, Giftias have a limited lifespan of only nine years, so a branch of the company called the Terminal Service Department retrieves the Giftias that are about to expire. Our main character, Sukasa, has recently been hired to Department 1, where he meets his new partner, Isla, who's a Giftia. When retrieving Giftias, there always has to be a team of one human and one Giftia, but we quickly learn that Isla isn't the best at her job. She's not performing properly, and all the other members of the department worry about her. Well, to make a long story short, Isla's getting ready to die, but Mikasa Sukasa ends up falling in love with her. Now, we can guess she's going to die in the first episode, but we for sure find out in the second. Knowing that Isla is going to die is the most important plot point that drives the show, and the show tells you it's going to happen. And this isn't something like Penny where she can just be rebuilt. Once a Giftia expires, their memories are wiped clean. Their bodies can be reused, but their personalities can never be duplicated. This show not only tells you that she's going to die, gives you context on why it's important, shows you that there's no way to avoid it, but also centers most of the main conflict around her lifespan getting smaller and smaller. Isla knows that she's going to die, and doesn't want anybody, especially Tsukasa, to be upset when she's gone, so she closes herself off from her friends. It's learning to open herself up and cherish the time she has left that makes her a character worth watching. She has to accept what she's been burdened with, just like every other Giftia in the show. Plastic Memories crafts a narrative from spoiling itself and shoves it in your face. Nobody's pussyfooting around the topic either. They know what's gonna happen and present the viewer with questions like, what would you do if your time was predetermined? And how would you interact with somebody that you know you can't be with? And do robots give really good head? It's spoilers like this that make you think about what you're watching and why it matters. You know what also has spoilers that matter? Video games. Spoilers in video games are a different beast from TV, movies, and books, because they can make you rethink the narrative of the game, but also change the way to play it. Undertale is the premier example of a game like this. In Undertale, if you know the ending of the game, it almost forces you to try different ways of playing it the second time around. Hell, doing a genocide run makes it so you have to uninstall your game if you ever want to play it normally again. A spoiler can completely change how you look at the characters, your interactions with them, how you deal with fighting enemies, how you deal with fighting other characters, and what their deaths mean for you and others. Spoilers that directly affect game mechanics like this change the narrative of the game as well. You can only fight Sans when you do a genocide run. That means killing literally everyone, and by the end of it all, you, the player, have to face the consequences. 
when Persona 5 came out, there was a huge deal with spoilers. You couldn't stream that game up to a certain point or you'd get in trouble for that shit. But nothing in the game is really spoiler worthy. Persona 5 is a game that you can only get the full experience of playing at least two times through, but knowing what happens from your first playthrough won't change the way you play on your second. Sure, you might be more efficient when going through a dungeon or trying to sleep with your teacher, but there's no direct consequence for whatever actions you decide to take, because by the end of the game, the same things will always happen. You'll save the day, get one of your 18 girlfriends, and fucking leave. And I don't buy that the narrative aspects of the game shouldn't be spoiled, because they're telegraphed to you by way of obvious foreshadowing and use of common sense. Like, if anyone really couldn't figure out who the traitor in the Phantom Thieves was, then I feel sorry for you. Now, I'm not so conceited to say that games that don't follow Undertale's formula are bad games. Real talk? I don't even like Undertale all that much, but I can recognize why it was such a big deal to not talk about the game over the reasons Persona 5 gave you. It's just a difference of context. If you don't want to hear any type of spoiler about anything, then that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying that spoilers shouldn't be a thing anymore. All I want is to try and change some minds about what may or may not be spoiler worthy. I want people to think like me and wonder, is this something I should really care about? That's all. So next time you hear about a big event or a character death, just stop and think about it. Well, those are my thoughts on spoilers. Like them? Hate them? Hate me? Tell me in the comments below. Subscribe to keep up to date with all the new shit I put out. Share the video and go follow me on Twitter. Love and peace, everyone.